I am genuinely really impressed with Three Jacks and a Beanstalk. I am not the target audience for this, nor was I when it was released. I was 14 when Rugrats Tales from the Crib, Three Jacks and a Beanstalk came out in 2006. But it is worth noting that I grew up worshipping the Rugrats. My entire childhood can be categorised by Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Rugrats, both of which I just watched constantly. And I will always watch the Rugrats now if there's a new film or although the new CGI effect is appalling. But, you know, if it's a film I haven't seen before, I will gladly give it a watch. And I have to say, Three Jacks and a Beanstalk is a barrel of laughs because it's... I, I didn't expect it to be just... Uh, I didn't expect it to be as developed as it is. I thought it would just be the story of Jack and a Beanstalk. But there are so many other fairy tales interwoven that it's just it's absolutely beautiful. Basically, the children are being given a story by their babysitter, who I completely forgot called the Minis, which brought back so many memories. And the story they're being told is Jack and the Beanstalk. But it's slightly different because the cow is actually the... Well, she's the parent. She's called Aunt Moo. And she has children of her own, human children, Tommy and um, Dill, voiced by Elizabeth Daly and Tara Strong. We have the usual fantastic voice cast here, as always. Uh, Nancy Cartwright as Chucky, Kat Suchi as Phil, um, obviously uh, Amanda Bynes as Taffy, though, which I didn't realise until just now. Brilliant voice cast playing the characters that we love. And Aunt Moo, as I said, has Phil and and then they happen upon Chucky and Kimmy who are actually embodying Jack and Jill and then they meet up with Phil and Lil who are Jack Spratt and Little Spratt also known as Lil the reason there are three Jacks is because it wasn't fair for the babysitter to just call one of the male babies Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk so instead we have Tommy, who is kind of the Jack of Jack and the Beanstalk. Chucky is Jack of Jack and Jill. And uh, Phil is Jack of Jack Spratt. Which, uh, you know, I thought was really quite an interesting way of encompassing these different fairy stories. And, you know, part of me was like, ooh, what what fairy tale are they going to weave into this next? After we kind of introduced ourselves to all of the characters, um, it does undertake more of a Jack and the Beanstalk approach with the magic beans and the big beanstalk and the giant. Um, you can probably guess which character is taking on the appearance of the giant. Um, it's usually the traditional antagonist of a Rugrats story. And Susie also plays a particularly interesting magical character as well. I'm not going to say any more than that because I don't really want to give away too much of the narrative in case you do decide to watch it. But if you grew up watching the Rugrats and you haven't seen this, I think you should give it a go because it's genuinely engaging to my adult mind. You know, most of them are not very engaging, but they're fun in a nostalgic way. But this one I actually thought was quite riveting and just made me really interested to see what would happen next. Really genuinely impressed with it. There is uh, at least one more Tales from the Crypt that I'd like to see. But if it's even half as good as Three Jacks and a Beanstalk, although I'm not the target audience, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yep, maybe I'm not the target audience at the time either, but as a lifelong Rugrats fan, Three Jacks and a Beanstalk is now holding a very new but very special place in my heart.